up a seat to the bar and join us for another episode of McAnally's Pubcast, a podcast exploring the fun and fantastical mind of Jim Butcher's The Dresden Files series. Hosts Tansen, Jess, and Maggie bring you another round of literary analysis on this immense, immersive, and colorful environment inhabited by Harry Dresden, the world's only licensed private investigator and professional wizard. Join an active and engaged community of new and diehard dedicated fans focused on the fabulous themes, theories, characters, context, lore, and more. This is McAnally's Dresden Files podcast, brought to you by Free Flow Rambling. Conjure by it at your own risk. Welcome to the McAnally's podcast, brought to you by Free Flow Rambling. This is episode 9.2, I'm a Wizard, Ask Me How, where we are covering the novel Summer Night. My name is Tanzan, and I'm joined by Maggie. Hello, hello. And Jess. Tango. Thank you so much to our Patreon subscribers for your generous support. It's people like you who help us keep doing what we're doing. If you're not yet a Patreon subscriber, sign up today and get a fuck ton of bonus content, kick ass merch, behind the scenes outtakes, and more. Sign up today at patreon.com slash freeflowrambling. Chapter 2 Dresden drops off Billy and returns to his office. There he finds his office already occupied by one Miss Somerset. Dresden quickly deduces that she is fairy and tells her to leave. She informs Harry that she has bought his debt to Leah and now controls him and proves it in a painful manner. She reveals herself to be Mab, Queen of the Winter Court. Supernatural 101. Teach the kiddos how to clamp a crime scene. (laughs) <laughs> of squished Take this frogs. shotgun, wipe it down, <laughs> and get rid of it. <laughs> right? Yes, I guess that. I was going to say it starts off with um, dropping him off, but yes, that's the night. Yeah, he then goes on to explain that he just went. And Billy's like, I'll just. He doesn't even really need you. Billy already knows, apparently. Because he grabbed it and wiped it down, so it wasn't left behind. But Billy's like, I'll take that and get rid of it for you, Mr. Dresden. <laughs> <laughs> Been here, done that. Let's do it again. <laughs> Okay, le- recently graduated college kid, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> responsible adult, responsible adult. Right. But again, it's only about five years between them. Yes. Well, yes, I know. And then, I mean, again, I keep forgetting that. That's not very much. I know. I always had a hard time with that the first few times through. Because again, like we've said a hundred times over, Dresden always sounded like 40. And even though like canon in my head, I'm like, I know... They're not going to start him out at like forty, but again, right? It just—it did always seem like Billy was so much younger and everything like that. Just because I guess he talks about him being in college. We already know that Dresden's like out in the world and starting his own business. And but yeah, Billy, I guess if he's graduated now, has to just be twenty-two-ish, three-ish, I guess, depending on right what, how old. Yeah, literally same though. Like I was nineteen when I moved out, and I've got like twenty-five-year-old friends who still live at home, and I'm like, ah. You'll never understand the world like I do. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> my age. So Georgia greets Billy with a first aid kit, it was yeah. very, which was very sweet. It's yeah. very sweet. We see Georgia again. They're still together. Yeah, she's out. And I think she notices because when they pull up and he gets out of the car, her nostrils kind of flare. So I kind of like how they carry over a little bit of wolfy abilities. Not a lot. Because um, I don't think we've ever really seen them be like you know, really super strong or anything like that when they're, like, in human form, other than, you know, I mean, like, it talks about in this one how Billy obviously has sort of lost the baby fat and bulked up and stuff like that, right? But sort of on a supernatural or preternatural level or whatever. But little things like that where sometimes, you know, they they seem to scent things out a little bit more than the average person would <laughs> without being too... But, yeah. So, kind of makes you wonder exactly how they're... Because we don't really talk about it a whole lot, but, like, I don't know if it's Dresden that mentions it somewhere or whatever, like, when he's talking about them. But basically, you know, Billy et al. have learned, like, one spell to do one thing, right? They're not wizards, they're not sorcerers, they're not shapeshifters, per se. They can't, like, just willingly change to whatever, but terror, whatever, taught them this one thing that they can do. So... 
it kind of makes you wonder, like, how does that work? What is the... Like, again, fine, if you were a shapeshifter, then you could just be like, you know, give yourself, you know, dog scent or whatever without maybe necessarily have to shift your entire physical form over to, like, a dog or a wolf or something like that, you know? You could just, like, change your ears to, like, pick up, you know, or, like... I but think I know where you're going with this. Yeah. And I will say that the reason that they still have their werewolf abilities, even when they're human, is because they're not just, oh, I cast a spell and I'm a werewolf. It's that it's more like they performed a ritual and they'll never end the ritual no matter what. They change bodies back and forth, but the ritual is just nonstop, mm. always happening forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Yeah, okay. Hmm. That's an interesting way. To, because they do, like, like, you know, you never really hear Harry reference them doing or saying anything they just seem to be able to shift back and forth kind of at will and you know at a moment's notice or whatever right so i guess that could be it's it's they did sort of make themselves sort of shape shifters in that sense that they've got free ability to flow back and forth between these two forms at any point yeah it's not like they start and stop a spell each and every time they shift it's that it's one non-stop continuous spell that never ever ends Regardless of whether or not they are human or wolf appearing. Yeah. That okay, yeah, that kind of makes sense, I guess. So you're speculating that they have the ability to selectively change something, though? Is that what I'm getting? Or, no, you? I was saying I don't think they really have that. Oh, okay. That's why, because I was like, say, like, if you're born a shapeshifter and whatever, whether you're talking Dresden verse or some other mythos or whatever, I just mean, you know, like, we've seen that in other... Um, formats or whatever where somebody can be like, you know, like the genie in Aladdin, right? It was like he could just make his ears like a super duper big radar dish if he wanted to hear something. He didn't have to be, or, you know, or same thing. He could, you know, that sort of them. But um, they're not really like that. Right. She's questioning why they can smell or hear or see better even when they're in their human form when they're not casting the spell. But I'm arguing that the spell has been cast and they never turn the spell off. Right. Regardless of how they look. I don't think I remembered any sort of reference to them actually outright saying that they do have preternatural while they're in well, human form. Not really. I just, they, I'm talking in this exact moment. He says he drops Billy off and George is sitting on the balcony reading a book. Billy gets out of the car and George is like nostrils flare and she looks up and immediately goes and gets a first aid kit because Billy got slashed or whatever by the the, right. t- the okay. ghoul. I, th- I think I probably overlooked that moment. Yeah, so... I'm like, I, yeah, and it's, it's such it's, a small moment that I don't think. Yeah, I no, it is. I'm just sort of. I'm talking more in the general sense, and that you know, again, my knowledge of the entire series and things like that. You know, it was just sort of made me wonder, like, what exactly made up the format of the werewolves and how that sort of works, right? Because I could say somebody somewhere says something, I think, to the effect of like, you know, taught him to spell of how to change, right? So I'm like, what is it? But yeah, I like that sort of definition, idea, theory, or whatever. That yeah, I guess it's more of a ritualistic type of thing that. Okay. Now that you've brought it up, I read it your way, but the way that I read it was that, like, I was, like, getting very big, like, charity vibes from George. I'm like, what the fuck do you have a problem with Dresden for? Because normally when someone's nostrils flare, they're yes. not werewolves, they're angry, right? Yes. So when See, I, I first think that's read probably it, how I is more how I took it, is like, why does she have a problem with Harry? Because she loves Harry every moment after this. Oh, so I'm like, yeah, why is no, she all, like, I nostrils flaring? Because she doesn't talk to them or see anything. It's just Georgia disappeared inside and came out with a first aid kit. Well, so yeah, I the always... whole scene is, like, Harry's being like, I didn't want to stick around. I gave a wave, and, like, I must yeah. have been pretty surly based on her expression. Right? So I totally read as Georgia just having an issue with him, and I'm like, but why? Yeah. Like, you love him every moment after this, but I realize now, yeah, she's That's, wearing yeah. Wolf, sniffing the air. The moment Billy mm-hmm. got out of the car, Georgia looked up sharply from her book, and her nostrils flared. She headed into the house and met him at the door with a first aid kit. So it's like she wasn't looking, right? She's sitting reading her book, and all of a sudden she's like, boing! Yeah. She, so. wait, wait, she looked up or as soon as the car. So she could have just heard the car. and yeah, She could have, but again, it's just the, it doesn't say when the car came in. It just says the moment Billy got out of the car, Georgia looked up sharply. So I was, yeah. I'm inclined to believe the werewolf yeah. senses because we know in yeah. future books right. that they have werewolf abilities even when they're human. We know that from future books. But I'd also, it would be funny just to be like, oh, Billy's home. I'll get the first aid kit. <laughs> <laughs> See, my overall impression is that, that she was oh, annoyed Billy's with Billy for getting hurt. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And you want to Any and all of the above. Like, oh, Billy's home with Dresden. Better get the first aid yeah. kit. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the whole town. Anytime Dresden drops off any of his friends from school, their parents just are like, okay, I'll get the bandages. <laughs> I do like, again, I don't think this is any major spoilers or anything like that. But in much later books, I believe there at Murphy's house or something like that and goes to get the first aid kit and instead of it being like 
you know, either like the little Tupperware kind of case or like the little zippered book kind of thing that most of us have. Is a, he pulls out like a fucking like toolbox of like, you know, it's like Murphy's first aid kit is not like, you know, for the boo-boo when you, you know, slice your finger cutting carrots or something. It's like a fucking like huge toolbox with pretty much everything in it but yeah i wouldn't expect anything less from a police officer right really. right and mm-hmm. especially with friends like she's got <laughs> you know? right. dresden and michael and i'm sure she's got a whole survivalist we're... kit as yeah, well yeah like, oh, yeah to, to, the, to the side for emergency. Well, what is, you know what, she's got to go big don't make fun of me for not knowing but what's that show mads mads not mads Who, his name one of the doctor's names was hawkeye Mash, mm-hmm. mash. Ah. Not Mobile mad. Army yes. Surgical Hospital. Right. Yes. There is a point later in the series when, like, Murphy's house is essentially just like the medical tent. <laughs> just like <laughs> young supernatural people rolling up every day, like amputees, like fix this, please. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> See right. you tomorrow. <laughs> So Dresden in, in his car catches a glimpse of himself in his mirror and notices how, notices how disheveled he is. His beard's grown in, he's got dark circles under his eyes, his hair's grown out, uh, grown out with, with short burned patches from, from an attack with a by, murder by pizza. Yes. Murder by pizza, yeah. Which he brought up at the end of last book. He yes. said at the end of Grave Peril, he was like, I ordered pizza, but... He tried, the pizza driver tried to kill me, so I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> yeah, he's like, then, yeah, I haven't ordered pizza since the first delivery tried to kill me or what, brought to bomb me. Mm-hmm. The pizza, yeah, I'm not, I'm that's, very inconsiderate. That's just rude. Don't Take away a man's pizza? I know, right? It's like, Carrie already has not a lot of stuff, and you know he's no, like, gourmet chef or anything <laughs> like that. But it was like, man, these vamps really know how to hurt a guy. <laughs> like, hit him at home, like... Mm, you like pizza? No more pizza for you, because you never know. Right, and how is he supposed to bribe the fairies now? Right? They've got a taste for pizza. They're not going right? back to, no. to sl- apple slices. Maybe he can just rely on them, like, <sighs> sniffing out. To be fair, though, he says as much here. He's like, well, nine months has passed since um, the party at Bianca's, which was, you know, in his birthday was the end of October, so it happened a few weeks before his birthday. Now yeah. we're in, like, um, mid-June. Is it, is it June or July when June. we start? Yeah, June. Okay, yeah, I know. Very it's specifically awesome. right before the 21st of the solstice. <laughs> June. Fair. Yeah. So we're in June. Nine months have passed, and he says, if not this chapter, the next one, he says, he's like... Not that I can't even afford to order pizza these days anyway. So, you know, Toot would have been suffering eventually whether or not the pizza guy was trying to <laughs> kill him or True. not. True. Although he never even really got the apple slices. I always thought that was interesting. I'm sure it was just a forgotten detail. But in that first book, because he makes a big deal about going home, and he's like, I got, like, the the milk and the bread and an apple and a little... And then he goes and he serves him, like, the bread and milk, but he, I'm like, you never did serve him the apple, Harry. You had your little pocket knife to cut it up and your little <laughs> thing, but I'm like, all you gave was the bread and milk. <laughs> so... I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that was a consolation prize that we don't know about later. Uh, maybe. <laughs> now that you've done my bidding, here's an you apple. You had your bread and milk. Here's your apple slices for dessert. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe. And he's, he sort of reflects on that he's been spending basically 24-7 researching in a basement for a vaccine or, or some kind of cure for Susan. Something, yeah. And we learned that Susan's been still writing for the Arcane, so Harry knows that she's still alive. Yeah. And But he's he's been respecting her wishes and not looking for her. Yes. So yeah, he refers to just to give us a little background and remind us who Susan was. And he says she had been a reporter for a yellow journal. Do y'all know where that came from or what that is? I guess yellow journal. Yeah, yellow journalism. Just the shittiest paper journalism. <laughs> kind of. So I mean, basically nowadays, yeah, it's ones that present little or no legitimate, well-searched news. It's like calling it a rag paper, but I don't even know where that origin comes from either. Yeah, that's another slang. <laughs> <laughs> like another, yeah, journalism that is based on sensationalism and crude exaggeration. More what it started from was when Hearst, who had already built the San Francisco Examiner, bought um, the World or New York World or whatever it was, and was going to outdo it by more sensationalism and it was New York City by outdoing his competitors in sensationalism, crusades, and Sunday features. He brought in some of his staff from San Francisco and hired away some from Pulitzer's paper, including Richard F. Outcult, a cartoonist who had drawn an immensely popular comics picture series, The Yellow Kid, for the Sunday World. 
So after his defection, the comic was drawn for the world by George B. Lukes, Lux, and the two rival picture series excited so much attention that the competition between the two newspapers came to be described as yellow journalism, basically because of this cartoon series that they both then tried and just trying to one up and outdo each other. So it just became kind of a big gong show, and that's where. So yeah, that's, that's where we, we get the rags. That's where we get the rags, and that's where we get most of yes, all that terms of that. So yeah, something like the arcane with Elvis spotted having lunch with Bigfoot is, uh uh-huh, sure, a lot of research went into that. I'm sure it's all backed up by facts. And so yeah, it was just all whatever you could to grab readers and improve circulation was, sure, we'll print that. Okay, cool. Uh, Harry guilts himself for not telling her that he loved her sooner. And he is absolutely miserable. He has, he doesn't have the money to get himself food, and and he knows he needs to get that job with uh, Mrs. Ms. Somerset. Yes, the one that Billy has set up. Yeah, that he came to tell us about. Yeah, and I think Dresden's probably being Dresden, going off several frontiers, right? Fronts. So I mean, even if Susan had not been specifically his girlfriend, and if he hadn't been putting off saying "I love you" and all through the last book and stuff like that, right? If it had been Justine, he still would have felt shitty and awful and guilty, you know, that he didn't prevent it. You know, he was, whether directly or indirectly, responsible. Yeah, I'm like, he would have felt, you know, just as guilty about not saving, protecting, whatever. But, yeah, he's just got it on so many levels because it was his girlfriend and he did love her. And she got the invitation from him to... You know, and then yeah, there was a, bit, a certain amount of neglect on his part, which is legit. Informa- yeah, yeah, that right? was legit. Th- had we was. shared information, had we talked to each other, had we, you know, so yeah, he's just got a whole lot going on there. So, you know, that whole yes. too little, too late thing, right? He spends every day now on Susan. Dollar <laughs> short and a day late. And yeah, exactly yeah. right. A lot of what so, ifs I had done this. Yeah. Yeah. And so because it has, again, that more personal resonance to it, I mean, he, you know, doesn't like anybody that got turned into a vampire, but now it hits really close to home it wasn't even just like a random oops they got her walking home one night you know so now he's yeah pouring everything into now this is the impetus to drive him to well okay nobody's done it since the existence of vampires but it doesn't mean there isn't a way to fix it <laughs> you know maybe just no one nobody's tried. looked for the cure yet right exactly we didn't have penicillin before somebody discovered penicillin and what it could do and Right, and this really des- describes the desperation that he that he's neglected everything so much. Everything. To try to get this cure that doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah. yeah, work, home, life, hygiene, friends. Yeah. yeah. Dude's downtrodden, depressed, miserable, I exhausted. The bottom of a very deep, dark hole. Mm-hmm. Right. And then just get pissed off at Billy when Billy points it out to him. <laughs> <laughs> and then five minutes later, he stops and actually looks in his rear view mirror and goes, well, fuck. Oh, shit, he's maybe, maybe he's got a point. <laughs> sits down and cries in his car. But eventually he's like, all right, get your shit together. You've got a job. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, so, yeah. so he does make it to his his office in Midtown. Already, He's already a few minutes late for his appointment. The elevator is apparently still out of order from the <laughs> scorpion attack in Oop. Stormfront. <laughs> Big bang. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. So he, he, he's shocked by a spark from his office door, which catches his attention a bit. Mm-hmm. So he cautiously enters his office and realizes it looks like shit in there. <laughs> I like that he does notice that somebody's been trying to clean up. So we, we realize his his friends have been there to just try to help him all along Take a little bit. Take out the trash, bag. bring in his uh, mail. <laughs> yeah, kind of shoved all of his mess into like a less messy pile. <laughs> I was like, we don't really know what to do with this or like where you need it. But um, <laughs> yes, we'll just try and tidy the mess piles a little bit. Well, he so. says like how furious he is. Like he's like, this is my space. Like people aren't supposed to be in here like tidying up. And like, I actually fully feel that. Like, it was, yeah, like I understand like, Billy and Georgia and friends like trying to be nice and help out but that one for me I'd be like invasion of privacy how dare you come and fix up my office <laughs> yeah especially if you're in such a low point it's, it's yeah right like, how, don't do anything for you know me what? don't do something nice I actually I like wanted shit. 87 cups of coffee in here okay it's how I count my days so fuck you now I don't know what day it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah right yeah exactly <laughs> So Dresden continues to go into the office and finds a beautiful woman there. She dons pure white hair, is very fair-skinned, and has lips the color of frozen mulberries. Mm -hmm. She is immaculately dressed in a a woman's power suit. Dresden deduces that this woman has some money. You know, people don't usually break out the mulberries. You know, this has got to be pretty uh, rare and fantastical. Well, unless you've got a monkey and a weasel on hand. 
<laughs> she thinks she's funny. <laughs> she's not, though. You're just jealous because you have no idea what I'm referring to, do you? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. Round and round the mulberry bush, the monkey chased the weasel. Oh, the monkey yes. thought was all in fun. Pop goes the weasel. Oh, you're so retro. It's <laughs> I'm only two years older than Tanzan. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> it's been 200 years. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> I'll say pocket full of posies is a little bit more topical these days. <laughs> Fair enough, I guess, maybe, but oh. I survived. I, can we have a button? You know, it's like ring around the rosy. I survived the plague or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe if we actually do all survive the plague, they'll hand them out. <laughs> We're still in it. <laughs> We're we, actively still we happening. We start designing now and Gonna jump on it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, anyways, so this is uh, further more to his point about being like, oh, maybe I did want to shave and not be in sweatpants and like have done laundry and like you know, like even th- when he said it in the car, he's like, oh, this is the first time I've kind of like you know, really looking in the mirror, stock taking over. stock. But this is like, it's really in the presence of other people. Because yeah, like you'll look at yourself in the mirror at home and you're like, who cares? I look horrible, right? But as yeah. soon as like someone comes over, or, like the, you know, the mailman knocks on your door and you're like, oh shit, I just grossed myself out. That's like the worst for me. Like you know, like not telemarketers, but whoever knocks on your door when you're at home. Canvassers. Canvassers. That's always like, if I accidentally open the door for them, that's always when I look horrible. And I'm like, yeah. I really have to stand on my doorstep looking like this for half an hour while I try to politely turn you away. Like, right? Like the <laughs> one time I had to drive you guys to school and we were like running late and I was just, it was like winter or something and I was like, screw it. I'm going in my flannel jammies. I'm comfortable. Like I had time to go home again or whatever and had to stop for, I don't know if I had to grab gas or something. And the gas station was like right on the corner um, down from our house and I was like whatever people go to Walmart in their pajamas all the time who cares it's like eight o'clock in the morning if I have yeah of course I ran into somebody I knew then who didn't live in that neighborhood but of course just happened to be at that gas station at that time when I walked in in like my yellow Tweety Bird pajamas or something <laughs> I'm like I fucking hate the world damn you Murphy the world hates me yeah he's yeah. such an evil bastard him not the other Murphy <laughs> kind of made me realize too that first you know again the initial thought is all like yeah, I look like shit. I'm wearing like crappy sweatpants and there's like this beautiful rich woman. But then I thought maybe it's the other consequence Harry might have had about wearing sweatpants and walking into a really beautiful, good looking, <laughs> nice smelling, wealthy woman. <laughs> <laughs> He's still pretty young, so. Yeah, I was like, maybe it wasn't just the style of <laughs> Maybe it was the other drawbacks to that. Think like a male Choice author writing a male character. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there was just all kinds of reasons, I guess, Harry wished he could have been dressed differently oh, that day. <laughs> well, I love it, too, where, like, when I get talking and she's like, I almost wish you hadn't shown up. <laughs> I like, think this is not the image I was expecting for the only wizard in the mm-hmm. phone book, right? And I'm like, yeah, no. No, not what you'd want out of someone you're hiring as a private investigator. Not at all, wizard. but I guess, on the other hand, when you're the only one in the book, true. who do you have to you know, Who sets the uniform? Oh, wait, go to the next guy. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> Yeah, she 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 quite quickly and correctly assesses Dresden by the state of him in his office. Like, <laughs> she, yeah, she's pretty doubtful that he's going to be able to help. Like, oh, I don't know about this. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah that, which again, very fair. Yeah, he is the only one in the phone book, but at the same time, also like, maybe I don't believe in wizards. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's not real. <laughs> maybe this is why he's advertising under. Yeah. He's just a complete psychopath. Yeah. Right. That's okay. I just wish they'd made mention of her. Because they always, like, I do like how whenever we go to Harry's office, pretty much Butcher will, like, throw in what kind of, like, pamphlets and things, you know? And I was like, is Mab sitting there reading, like, Magic for Dummies? Or, like, I'm a Wizard, Ask Me How? Or, like, I forget, Witches Don't Actually Float or whatever. I think is that the one from, like, yeah. Stormfront That's or something? Like, yeah, and it's just <laughs> like, you know. It was like one of these times where I'd love it some, but I mean, it's kind of getting a bit late now. We're so far in the series, but I'm like, it would have been, like, hilarious to, like, you know, like, sh- like show up at campus and see, like, a couple of these, like, tack to the, you know, somebody's, like, actually looking through his pamphlets or, like, trying to bone them on, you know, like, hey, you read one. Hey, Marv, can I leave, like, my uh, box of, like, Girl Scout flyers at your office door? <laughs> Well, not even so much in that Marv way coming in a word like my around. wizard's doing a donation fundraiser this weekend. <laughs> Anybody want to buy some popcorn? <laughs> 
Yeah, at this point, he might need some some fundraising. (laughs) Okay, I was thinking more, it'd just be funny if he came across somebody that had, like, picked one up. But, okay, that's even funnier if he's, like, trying to go in places and, like, (laughs) leave them other mundane places around town. Every time he goes to Burger King, he's just like, can I just put this on the wall? Yeah, right. <laughs> just drops a few into right, that, right like... next to the, the room for rent, like... Well, I work at a gas station, friend. right, and people right. will bring us their pamphlets, like, can I leave this by the till? And I always say yes, but then after they leave, then I decide whether or not I actually want that there. And I'm like, what are you, what are you uh, advertising? And I'm like, nah, I'm putting this in the garbage. Or sometimes I'm like, actually, yeah, that one can stay. <laughs> like, I think more, do they have that, like... In Chicago and stuff, too, where we have all, like, those little free magazine racks with, like, the home renters and, like, the community guides and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, and grocery stores and things grocery like that, Grocery stores yeah. and, like, sometimes mm-hmm. the Burger Kings, you know. <laughs> like, he's just going around, yeah. like, stuffing those in a few slots or whatever, you know. <laughs> Even worse is, like, if he's going door-to-door, putting it in the mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> Lost rings? Well, thankfully, Harry. Paranormal investigations? <laughs> <laughs> he, he just goes and cruises the Gold Coast. He's like, screw... You know, I don't know really any neighborhoods. <laughs> you know, farmer markets that like set up their little booth or whatever like that. He should okay, just yeah. like have like a like a. Um, but I was thinking he's just ditching like, all like, like a, the a table and um no a table and a and a market tablecloth. You know, he just yes. sits there and he's like, all right, <laughs> is it like that crystal mean ball for, like, <laughs> cards <laughs> approach? <laughs> no, he wouldn't do that because he does not want to be seen as a fortune teller. So yeah, he but wouldn't still, do you've whole... got to have the image, okay. Yeah, if he doesn't want to be seen as a fortune teller, so he'd have other doodads. And he should stop, stop telling people their fortunes. When did he start? <laughs> You're about to die, boo. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Jessica proving she really hasn't read these books. <laughs> I just say words. I don't really I just read a chapter at a time, five minutes before. I retain it enough for the hour-long conversation, and it's gone again. <laughs> But yes, I just think it'd be funny him going out to like all the rich neighborhoods and, you know, he's like, I don't, you know, poor people can't afford me and won't be, but the rich people might hire me to find their ring and their (laughs) fancy. Rich people love psychics. That too, right? Maybe you could talk them into something else when they got there. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) I say that would be great and a a totally good, like, money-making scheme for, like, a poor young guy, but at the same time, Harry would have about, like, two seconds of patience. Yeah, that's the thing. For any client that came to him. He's like, yeah, yeah, no. It's like the second they showed up, he'd be like, no, you're rich and snooty, and I just annoy the fuck out of me. I don't care if you're going to pay me. I'm not taking a job. <laughs> or even worse, even if he did want the job and he was willing to do it, they wouldn't put up with his <laughs> lip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Certainly, ma'am. Of course, ma'am. Yeah, no, no. So the longer that uh, Harry talks to Ms. Somerset, the more she sort of reveals that she knows about wizards. We find out that she knows about soul gazing and suggests to take to partake in one. And and Dresden is like, yeah, no, no. Yeah, I love too that he's not even selling it as like, oh, I don't really want to know what's in your brain. He's mu- very much selling it as like, you don't want to see the inside of my brain, lady. Like I'm <laughs> saving you trauma. Right. Like, I know it sounds cool, but no one is gonna like what they see when they soul gaze me. <laughs> like you know, right. Yeah, and it's, um, I was gonna say, you know, it was our boy finally kind of, like, learning, because, you know, you're talking about the first, but I was, like, whips that shit out like a weapon the first, bah and now Element like, surprise. oh, yeah, no, I've learned that's a bad idea on both ends. He's like, they're either gonna run away, or they're gonna die. Um, or I'm just gonna have to fucking see that, and I'm just, yeah, I'm, like, suddenly stalking up, like, the mental horror library. You only take so many cosmic horrors before you're like, (laughs) alright. Maybe I'll think about it now. Oh, maybe it's not such a good idea. Like, yes, it's effective and stops them in their tracks momentarily, but I have to live with that for the rest of my life. So, maybe we'll just slow down a little on that one. So, he listens to her case a little bit. Well, no. Does she talk about this, or does he threaten her first? He, like, pulls a gun on her, I think, next. Um, I know, but does she uh, talk about her case before that? Or are they just, like... No, the no, soul okay, gaze. Yeah, no, I'm talking ahead. about the soul gaze for, first, because yeah. she's, like, he's, like, um... She's, like, we can gaze on each other, you and I, then I will know if you can be of any use to me. Surely it will cost me nothing. And he's, like, I wouldn't be so sure, because um, you'll get to ski mm-hmm, mm-hmm, everything. Mm-hmm. And then she's, like, uh, why not? It won't take long. And he's, like, that's not the issue. So he's still trying to talk her out of it. He's like, Miss Somerset, I think you may have made a uh, mistake in your estimations. So she's like, oh. And he's like, I nodded. I opened the drawer to my desk and took out a pad of paper. Yeah, I've had a rough time of things lately. You can't possibly know how little that matters to me. <laughs> I'm no, like, that's a funny line. Bad? <laughs> but a lie. A full-on lie, as we soon find out. Like, Miss Mab has had her... Spoiler. No! <laughs> but Miss Somerset has had her eye on this bitch for a little while, like... 
Like, we find out very soon here. Like, she's lined up her dominoes quite nicely. She knows exactly what's going on with his she life. She knows. But I don't think she's like, you can't possibly know how little that matters to me. And I don't think that is a lie. I think it plays into her hand for what she wants. Mm-hmm. But as far yeah, as so her she doesn't actually care about him. caring yeah, her, if he's having his rough, well-being, Ooh, she, yeah, she didn't give a shit about the rough time he's having. All she no, cares very about is how it's going to play out for her. It benefits her. But, mm-hmm. yeah, so... Sorry, I can't support you on that one, much as I'd love to agree with you, but I don't think Mab's lying one bit. <laughs> and I think that is what kind of makes it funnier. She is can't what you lie, find so... Up. Well, that's my boss, what I thought you were going with. You're like, ha, she told an outright lie. No, but... I'm not saying that. But... Oh, okay, that's what I thought you were going to, like, jump on for a second and be like, cut her. But yeah, no. no. I'm like, yeah. I just think it's, again, once you do find out and know when Mab's, like, thousands of years, millions of years, you know, however long Mab has been around and blah, blah, blah. And she's just like, yeah, I don't care. You can't possibly know. <laughs> yeah, doesn't she pull the gun on him next? And then, yeah. No, she he does. As it, he pulls out the pad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, because she's too weak, too good to be true. And, and then he tells her to put her hands on the table, which she proceeds, and then proceeds to flick an iron nail at her, which she does not appreciate whatsoever. No. She tries to bluff it for a moment, and then at the last second, she just, yeah. and just, you know, not moving fast, just like blurs and reappears. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, that's not even just quick movement, that was. Right. Reveals her to be fairy. Completely. But yeah, I just, I do, again, just love that mental image of that, of him, you know, sitting there as this conversation is going on and being like, you know, and, you know, take out his pad and his pencil, like he's going to start, you know, take, you know, and then casually <laughs> take out the gun and sit it on the other side. And it's like, <laughs> you know, and then, yes, of all things, when he pulls out a nail and that's it. But yeah, I just always love kind of. Empty the drawer. <laughs> just like, Everyone's got to clear out their drunk drawer every now and every again. Every once in a while. She wasn't that impressed with the gun. Let's see if this will impress her. And he flicks a thumbtack in her face. But Right. So then he's all like, blah, 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 blah. Like, my deal with Leah isn't expired yet. And she's not allowed to send people after me. So you have to fuck off. And, uh, blah, and, that's and this, me. this, this one gets me, though. So his, his closing line, so he's like, the bargain with my godmother has months yet to go. He said, a year and a day, she had to leave me alone. That was the deal. If she's trying to weasel out of it, I'm going to be upset. And I'm like, Chris, Harry, the biggest fucking hypocrite ever. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I was very specific in that deal with her. <laughs> if she even tries dare. for a second. She tried to weasel out of it like I did to her 47 times. <laughs> and the way that Marsters reads it, too, he's like, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> You're so, like, sanctimonious. <laughs> I know. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I'd argue maybe a little bit with that. <laughs> I would have read it the other way. But, yeah, I was just like, he's like, if she's trying to weasel out of it, you're just like, <laughs> Like, are you fucking for real? <laughs> like, seriously, you're being We're funny on again. We're plan you? like 35 right now. I know. <laughs> it just killed me. I'm going to be upset. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, well, it, yeah. But the, anyways, this, things get worse. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they do. The fairy is rather impressed by Dresden. She, she asked him to know how he figured it out. Um, the static on the door being one of them, the, the door being locked and that she doesn't actually answer any of the questions directly. Yeah. And that for whatever reason, she has no purse for her ensemble, which, you know, because every woman has to have a purse. I know. I'm not, yeah. I, I, I'm like, yes and no with that. I mean, granted, you know, most of the time you would see her with a fancy chic little, but at the same time, I'm like, if she's, I don't know, maybe she left it down in her waiting limo. Like, what's the thing? Like, if I'm seeing, like, some, like, maybe wizard thing, like, I'd probably already, like, did you know, I don't have have a limo to tuck it somewhere, but I probably would have, like, you know, slipped into my bra or something, you know, just to be safe, right? Like, but yeah, exactly, lock everything away and not take it in with you where it's gonna, but. crazy guys just pulling guns and nails on everyone. Right? (laughs) This is true. And I mean, uh, yeah, again, I get it a little bit. Like, you know, we always joke and bitch about, like, how no women's clothing has pockets, you know? And it's like, it'll ruin the lining and shove a bunch of crap in your fancy. And I'm like, I get, again, a woman like this. Exactly. She's probably not shoving her cell phone down into her bra or her bank card or anything like that, you know? She probably doesn't have, like, 20 bucks slipped into the... Into her heel. The, the, <laughs> yeah, inside her shoe. Inside and my not, six-inch pump is at 20. Yeah, right, you know? 
know? Like, so, yes, you're right. She probably, from that point of view, would have a purse to hang on to those kinds of necessities. But at the same time, right, I'm like, again, if you're making it Harry, your logic is so antiquated. It's, well, a little bit, right? But I was like, and partially, I'm like, yeah, I was like, I don't know that everybody carries a purse all the time. And exactly, I'm like, if she's this, well, exactly, I'm like, chances are, I mean... Well, yeah, because Chicago's not the same. More people drive in Chicago than New York. So I was going to say, I guess if you're taking a cab, you're not going to leave your shit in a cab. But chances are exactly right. She probably has a vehicle or a driver or a little, right? I'm like, yeah, she could easily just have left all that shit in the car and locked it up. And then, you know. My like, man servant is outside waiting. Yeah, exactly. All he needs is the word. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, you know. Exactly. I'm like, she can go down and get it to her. She'll probably fucking wire you the money if she's actually hiring you for a job or something, right. you know? I was like, but yes, whatever, I guess. Either it, way, she's impressed. Either way, yes. it were, yeah, he can not He's too a distractive. Detective. He still can think on his feet. and Right. She, yeah. she wishes to employ Dresden to retrieve something stolen and return it to the rightful owners. It's a li- little bit vague. And he, yeah, pretty much is just like, fuck no. Yeah. Don't care. Nope. <laughs> But you haven't even heard what it is. It nope. Don't come. Nope. Don't want it. Nope. <laughs> Much to his surprise, she counters because uh, and she lets him know his debt has been purchased from Leah, and mm. she that he kind of does have to do what she says. A little bit. <laughs> Ooh, maybe some weaseling did happen, Harry. Oh, yeah. Just a touch. Well, in all fairness, he is pretty upset. <laughs> <laughs> Leah didn't weasel out of it so much as Mab weaseled into it. This is right, So, yes. you know, give Leah her credit. <laughs> Leah's beholden to Mab, so, yeah. you know, if she wants to pick up his marker, then, uh, yeah, she didn't have a whole lot to, to yep. argue about that, so. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately for Harry, that was not part of the uh, <laughs> deal. <laughs> right. Well, that sort of sets up that she is already a better manipulator than than Leah is. Yeah, she's the queen. So, so but he yeah. he doesn't quite know this yet. But yeah, but yeah, no, exactly but that. Yeah, yeah good this, as Leah is, and this time. fairy has some power. Which is yeah, a good point, I guess. Yeah, even if you don't know that she's the queen, to know that she outsmarted Leah as far as he's aware, or manipulated, or, or was or, able to bargain, or, or whatever. Exactly. Leah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, that does that does mean big chops. Right. Yeah. And of course, Dresden doesn't really believe her and asks for proof. <laughs> Oh, oh fuck. Did I, get it? Like, <laughs> I cannot read this at all. I've got to. I always listen to the audiobook uh, when I did this chapter, yeah. And I kept taking the earbud out and I'd wait 30 seconds, I'd put it back. I'm like, oh, we're still on it. And I take out the earbud and I'd wait 30 seconds, I'd put it. I'm like, God, move on already. I take out the earbud. <laughs> it it like, doesn't last that long. It was like three or four times that I tried to put in the earbud. And I'm like, can we just like move on? Well, okay, the one part is, I guess you know the scene if you have to get through the whole scene that. But I'm like, it doesn't take that long for it to happen. But yeah. No. Unpleasant. Don't Very like. Very unpleasant. Yeah, and it shows her, her oh. ruthlessness. Like, you want proof? <laughs> oh, Fine. Yeah. Here it is. Especially because, like, because that's that. Uh, uh, like I gotta a, say, a letter letter letter? probably really dull. No, I was gonna say not terrible, oh. not sharp enough for something like that. Yeah. I yeah. love Summer Night. It's one of my favorites. Absolutely. But even still, I can't say that I've got it perfectly memorized. So in my head, I thought it was gonna be like she almost does it, but it goes between the finger. No, no. Oh yeah. Right through the hand. Okay, cool. I probably have never read that scene. Pro- pro- the second time. And you're like, oh, I know what's happening. I've probably just never read that scene in its entirety you at all. I've probably skimmed it my it, entire right? life. So, yeah, like, I was fully just like, okay, 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 let's just gonna just bear. Oh, uh, I, uh, <laughs> no. yeah. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. I, oh. yeah. And where I don't know if it's just coming up here shortly or if it was in one of the last books, oh. but I mean, he does have, I think it's here explaining the course. But, anyways, that very apt description that not so much good or evil, but like, the seasons for which they were named, just cold. Um, oh, I had it in my brain. Not Detached. calculating. Beautiful, pitiless, and entirely without remorse. Yeah, there you go. So basically, yes, wherever he says that that's, you know, such an apt description is that, yeah. What is it? Beautiful, pitiless, and... Without com- remorse. Entirely without entirely remorse. Entirely without remorse, yeah. So... Yeah, she's like, I don't give a shit. You want proof? You want proof? And so, yeah, unfortunately, there's there's no between the fingers. There's no almost. It's, yeah. And what's even harsh. worse, too, is that he even says, he's like, and also my deal with Leah's be still being contested. And she's like, well, it's settled now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is, like, even worse for him because, like, yeah, like, under the terms of the new deal, yeah, no, things are a little bit more concrete because, um, 
Leah and Mab were the ones who wrote that new deal, not you yeah. and your slippery bastard self. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. This is a complete loss of control for, for Harry. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, it's like the he same thing. He has some cards. No, no, he's got nothing. And it's one thing when you go to, like, your insurance and you, like, strike a deal with them or whatever like that, right? But then they get bought out by a bigger company and the contract changes and you're not a part of that. And so you just get screwed because, like, oh, well, our company doesn't work like that. And it's like, yeah, but the guys I signed with did, so you've got to honor. And they're like, no, we don't, blah, yeah, blah, blah, exactly. right? And then you go into this big fight with them, right? So yeah, like Harry just like, uh, <laughs> but fuck. I didn't even get to do anything greasy, slimy, weasley. That's not fair. Don't take it away from me. Yeah, no, he's pretty much fucked. Yeah. And so he demands to know who she is. She says, "I have many names." She murmured, "But you may call me Mab, Queen of Air and Darkness, Monarch of the Winter Court of the She." Oh, uh, motherfucking uh, shit. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah. Now, I just, coming back to that, the, the, the description that he gives, and I just love this sort of little f- foreshadowing of the, the, the color of her lips, the frozen mulberries. Like, it was just a very clever, just a little tiny hint. Yes. It was, it was great. I like that. Yes, there was a couple like, of little... Here's a little, little winter court. Just a little... Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Why do you think the reason why she chose Somerset as the, as the name? That's just like the most fairy name. Like, like I'm almost annoyed that Harry didn't use that in his list of reasons. Like that should have made it more than the purse. Like once he was thinking of stuff, yeah. Well, yeah, like like oh, uh, cause your uh, your pseudonym is like Somerset. Like like Harry's read Shakespeare. Like <laughs> yeah, is that a Shakespearean name? Uh, Shakespeare could have gotten it from someone else, but that's Shakespeare. Is it, he did okay? Cause I, I, it's been you know, Midsummer's Night Dream. Oddly enough, was I think the first Shakespeare I ever did, but it was like seventh grade, and I had a horrible, terrible teacher that made it awful, and I've never really gone back to it since. So, I don't remember a lot of the finer details about it. Um, so, is that the one that or he is it uses? Just like, uh, see, I kind of wondered if it was a play on the words uh, "the end of summer," summer set. Yeah, right? Like, it could be that. Because I know when I sort of looked at the word itself, there was no sort of inherent origins other than just being, you know, English and whatever. And That's right. cool, though, if it's Shakespeare. Awesome. But, yes, I, I did not get that far in, in looking into it. I did not. Because I think I just did. I think I searched for, like, origin, not even occur to me to check for. So nothing like that came literary up. When it was, reference, yeah, yeah, literary. I didn't check for other literary references. I'm wrong. He used a Somerset in... Um it's the Duke of Somerset and his Henry V.I. He doesn't mention it in Midsummer. That's the six, but okay. <sighs> I don't care. <laughs> That's a lot more research than I'd want to put in. Yeah, no. Yeah. So I don't know where Somerset comes from, but it's just a well-known... People just use Somerset Apparently in their fairy stories. To you. Mm-hmm. Apparently I haven't read enough fairy stories because I have not ever actually come across that as being like an instant... I, I just tried to look up the, some lore right now and I can't find any origins. I just see everyone using it as... Mm. Not that you were previously familiar with it, but there's... Mm. I, I don't I don't know. I just... Like, I guess. It's in my head, but I don't know how. <laughs> yeah. I do see a certain, you know, um, irony or, you know, whatever with... And I mean, again, that's... I don't know if she picked it just to be sort of contrary, you know, cheeky. rather than... Yeah, rather than like a winter name. She went with... Uh, yeah, Miss Snow. Or so, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah. But I do kind of like, I'm like, yeah, it could be sort of a play on the end of summer or something. But I'm sure if somebody else has other ideas or some reference that we're missing, I'm sure they will be glad to let us know. Yeah, I'd love to hear what you think. (laughs) Fun and interesting chats all the time. I didn't realize that Mab made an appearance so early in these books. Like, for some reason, I thought they were much later. But I'm I'm happy. Mab gets on her shit day one. (laughs) (laughs) She does. She does jump in really fast. This concludes our episode 9.2, I'm a Wizard, Ask Me How. Thank you for listening. You can find us online at freeflowrambling.com and macanalies.ca. There we have links to our other podcasts, social media, and other fun tidbits. Please subscribe if you like what you're hearing, and please consider supporting us through Patreon to keep the magic alive and to see more content. We are Free Flow Rambling. Conjure by it at your own risk. <laughs>